Welcome to Geektionary. My name's Corey Hales, and this is the geekiest podcast you'll probably ever hear, where I will try to teach you, along with my friends, about the nerdier things in life. Let's talk about it. I am here. Can I say your last name as well? Yeah, go for it. It's uh, Marina Giannitsos. Oh, yeah, you did it right. I did? Okay. Well, you were were just talking on the phone explaining how it was. uh, Or (laughs) Giannitsos. That's the real reason. Which, whenever I say it, it makes me feel like doing an Italian accent very badly. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to be talking about the JLA here in Marina's surprisingly nice house. I don't know why I'm surprised, but... uh, (laughs) Oh, you know, Daddy bought us. Man. Anyway, so back to the JLA. So they were first uh, created in February or March 1960, and uh, that was in The Brave and the Bold, number 28. And they didn't get their own title until October 1960, same years. It's pretty good. So Yeah, that's actually pretty decent, considering mm-hmm. most uh, characters don't actually get their own title for a while. Yeah, yeah, like... Um, well, Wolverine or Batman? I don't think Batman got his right away. No, his was also his, uh, Detective Comics. His is Detective Comics 27, I think was his first appearance. I could yeah. be wrong about that yeah. issue. <laughs> I, I always wondered about that because it was like, it was it was deep into the Detective Comics run. And then all of a sudden, I wonder, was it like all just uh, like Sam Spade or Sherlock Holmes type dudes running around and all of a sudden some guy dressed up as a bat? Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what the mm-hmm. mentality behind Batman was. I'm not a huge Batman person. Yeah, that, which is weird. Like, Batman is generally considered to be, like, the best character in comics ever. Which I don't agree with at all, but... How come? Like, what the... What about Batman? Yeah. I don't know. Batman and Iron Man. Iron Man okay, is... Okay, so this, oh, is, yeah. this is how I see it. Marvel and DC each have a character that is a, a character that the other company has. Mm-hmm. So Batman is to Iron Man. They're yeah. the same. Um, they're both yeah. rich, playboy type people in, in their normal lives, and yeah. then they dress up to fight crime in their like super gadgets and whatever. Yeah. Um, so the reason I don't like these characters is just because I don't know. Like a lot of people, I think like them because they're relatable. Like, oh, this could be possible <laughs> to some extent, but. I think yeah. that's why I hate them, because it's not possible, regardless. Yeah. You cannot do that. Yeah, know? the relatableness kind of ends at the point where they make their own stuff, and yeah. they become the best of the best of the best. Exactly. Yeah. Like, come on, as if people could make, like, Tony Stark stuff. Tony like Stark's that. relatable in the sense that he had an alcohol problem, and that's kind of about it. <laughs> well, yeah. How many people get so rich they the can thing buy is countries? That, I think they try to do that with every superhero. <laughs> There's a relatable aspect to every superhero. I don't. I don't really know what the hype is about Batman. Mm-hmm. I think it's a silly character. I think personally, like just Batman, silly. Batman, Batman. Think about it. Yeah. A Batman. That seems like you know straight out of the sixties, which it is. Yeah. Understandably. Yeah. But it's just like you know the X Men once fought, fought a person named the Unicorn Man. So I'm just like, <laughs> this is how I think of it. Or like you know giant grasshoppers. It's like the most campy thing to think of. Yeah. And that's the only reason Batman survived. It's because that '60s campy show. It's kind of like a kind of like a B movie that got too big for its britches. Yeah, yeah. and then somehow became serious. You know, like, yeah, super serious too. Super like serious. Christopher like, Nolan series. Yeah. Yeah, nothing's more serious than talking like you have whiskey and gravel. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. I don't know. I like, the character just rubs me the wrong way. But anyway, yeah. this is off topic. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's kind of on topic because Batman was one of the original characters he in the was. JLA, along with uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, uh, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, The Flash, Barry Allen. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, Aquaman mm-hmm. and Martian Manhunter. Never been a fan of Martian Manhunter. You know, it's funny because. It's funny you say that, because that's the only character that's missing out of the new 52 JLA. Yeah? Yeah. Um, they've replaced him with Cyborg, Ugh. which I don't exactly agree with. I understand <clears throat> the context of what they did that with and like, why they did it, but yeah. I don't really agree that that was a good choice, because Cyborg always was a Teen Titan to me. He was never... Yeah, even though he I, was clearly in his 30s. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I mean, people just... They drew him differently, and yeah. it all depends on how you draw him. I mean, in the JLA, he is a teenager, mm-hmm. right? Oh, really? Yeah, he's okay. not. Uh, he's he's not an adult like the rest of them are adults. So it kind of feels weird with him there. It does it does he are they, is he treated kind of like just the sidekick almost? Um, because he's a fairly really. powerful dude. He is yeah. very powerful. The what they mostly treat him for is like data recon. So like he oh. he's ability to. He's the techie. He's the techie. Yeah. The guy who has all the maps and I mean. 
jail jail a i can't remember how many issues it's in it's got to be like it's nine or eight or nine right now yeah so i mean there hasn't been a whole lot of expansion on each character but okay. i would say he's probably the least expanded on well probably well, out of all of them even if so. they made him one of the founding members of the new 52's JLA, he's still like he's still cyborg. People that have read any comic yeah. prior to the new 52 that involved the JLA are just like, well, it's it's fucking Superman, it's Batman, it's Wonder Woman. Yeah, you, know? you don't. Yeah, exactly. And I think maybe that's one of the downfalls of the JLA in general as a as because a team. yeah, like uh, like you were saying before, just um, how the JLA and the Avengers are different is that the Avengers are kind of in a way more well rounded. They are, and they work well on each other. Yeah. That's another thing. I mean, you do have the god Thor, mm-hmm. which I find is very odd. Like, what an odd character to throw into the mix. But it yeah. works so well, and you can tell that it works so well. Look at the movie, right? Like, yeah. how they played him into the movie. I mean, it's weird, because he did have the least screen time out of any other character in the movie. Did he really? Yeah, he did. He huh. had, like... I, I was reading, he had, like, 17 minutes or something. Okay. Um, Black Widow had the second it, most. I thought it was third screen. most. I read that oh, article too. Yeah, maybe yeah. it was third. But it, was it was Captain America. No, yeah, yeah Captain yeah. America, Iron, Iron Man, Man, Black, Black Widow. Widow. Yeah. But still, Black Widow as a character should not have gotten out of screen time. We oh, all know no. why she did. But... Oh, yeah, because it's Scarlett Johansson <laughs> yeah. wearing leather doing like Lucha Libre stuff, which is <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Exactly. So, um, but Thor did get the least amount of screen time. Yeah. So, but the thing is about <clears throat> Thor is in the Avengers, it works so well together, and he's still a god, but they don't really bring out all his powers at once, right? Whereas yeah. the JLA, it's like everybody's so overpowered. Mm-hmm. You know, Superman can like punch walls, can, you know, lift up buses and yeah. trains and whatever. He and can, like, so can Wonder Woman. Yeah. And like, so you know, can Green Lantern, except with his ring. With his ring. Yeah. Like, you know, so I think that is one of the hardest things about writing the JLA. Yeah. Or, and that's a lot of people have been not so from what i've read have not been so particularly loving the new jla yeah um but i think they still have to give it a little bit of time nine issues is not enough time no no to give, really... it, give it a like a good 12 issues like, yeah a, give it a good a, 12 a or yeah. even more than that and then see like i can kind of get what they're coming from and the thing is they're trying to introduce more characters so like mm-hmm. recently they've been trying to introduce uh green arrow into the mix okay and a lot of people find it very irksome because green arrow's character Seems very. He's like that guy who's like tagging along with the JLA, trying to get them to let him join. It's like the oh, the nerdy kid uh, wanting to join the popular group, right? He, they've they've made they've made a Green Arrow the new Snapper Car. Yeah, that ch- sure, you but... know who Snapper Car. Is. No, I haven't oh, right um, but... <laughs> Snapper Car was basically just a guy that hung out with the JLA. He had no powers. He did nothing. Yeah, except they would be exactly lots like that. of snapping. Ex- well. <laughs> no, not necessarily like that. Like I mean, the thing is, Green uh, Green Arrow would try to be at every you know, battle oh. or whatever, and he'd be like, look what I can do, JLA. And so like, he's like the creepy stalker. He's like, oh, hey, you happen to be here at the same time as yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. What's he's up, just dudes? like, look at me, you know, let me join. <laughs> and then the, the JLA's like, we can't let anybody in our group because we don't know. And the thing is, so they did introduce the Martian Manhunter yeah, yeah. for like a brief one page. You're like, remember last time we let a group member in? This is actually what happens. Like, remember last time we let a group member in? Yeah. And it shows the Martian Manhunter. And then, like, I guess attacking them all. Okay. And I'm so confused. Like, he was like, it maybe wasn't him, but it... Yeah, someone that looked like... Uh, yeah. yeah. And then the, and then it shows a panel where he's on Mars, and he's just like, the JLA is not ready yet, or something like that. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, what happened? Like, they never expanded <laughs> on that. I hope they do. Um, That's kind of, though, how, how superhero teams always start. It's like, hey, there's someone we don't really know. Let's fight him. Oh, okay, I guess we're buddies now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. A lot of a lot of them turn from villains to good guys. Um, or it's just a misunderstanding. Yeah, exactly. Is, oh, yeah, I didn't stupidest mean, thing. Yeah. Um, the one thing about the new JLA is that um, they're really playing up uh, a character... Oh, I can't remember his name, and this sounds terrible because I should know his name. Because he's Wonder Greek? Woman's. Um, no, it's <laughs> Wonder Woman's love interest. Ah, uh, Trevor something. Trevor something. Trevor. Huh. I think his last name's Trevor. Anyways, whatever. Um, they're really playing up this like weird romance, not romance thing between yeah. these characters, and I'm like, uh, I don't think people read the JLA for that, but. You know, I think they're maybe just trying to mal it into something. I think it'll yeah. turn really good. The art is phenomenal, Jim Lee. I mean, I'd kind, of, I'd kind of figure they'd be adding the Trevor uh, plot line simply because, like, at some point, 
it will actually involve all of them if they're going to mention it in a team yeah book, you know maybe yeah well i mean the thing is he's the li- liaison between the jla mm-hmm. and i don't know like government organization that okay. funds them <laughs> Are the JLA, uh, the CIA. are they located in the satellite? Of or, course uh, they are. Oh, yeah? Okay. Of course they are. Come on. Like, That's they, their location. Did they always, they weren't always in the satellite. They've had, a, they've had a number of bases, like a tower of some sort, I think. A watchtower? Uh, Detroit. They were in watch Detroit tower. for a while. I think the satellite's just too symbolic, memorable, symbolic, whatever. Yeah, yeah. For them to really throw away. I, the one thing I really love about the JLA, and yeah. it probably goes back to my hate on Batman, but <laughs> they're always picking on Batman and how he's no powers, and it like makes me laugh so well, much. I, I just picture Superman and Wonder Woman like shoving him around, like, "Come on, Batman, why don't you stop it? <laughs> yeah, stop hitting yourself, Batman." <laughs> exactly. Well, it's not so much Superman and Wonder Woman who give him a hard time; it's always Green Lantern and Flash. Really. So, yeah, because uh, there's this one part where Green Arrow was trying to get in. He's like, come on, guys, let me into the group. Yeah. And Green Lantern is just like, we already have one guy who doesn't have powers and, like, points at Batman. And I, like, Does just Batman just out. pout or what? That would be he awesome if ignores, he just starts pouting. He just ignores it. I mean, typical Batman. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, Batman is an important part because he's got the investigative skills, yeah, right? Yeah. He's the world's greatest detective. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, he... Is the one who always gets down to who's the bad guy. Yeah. He's not necessarily always the one fighting the bad guy, like at the end. Like, it's <laughs> oh. always Superman just like giving him a pounding or whatever. But so, that's how a team works together. Cyborg will hack something, Batman will find out exactly who it is and how to fight them, and then he, they both just kind of point and say, go get him. And that's what I feel like. I think that's. Well, so, so far. They're really. They're basically Oracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, Batman has done a lot in the JLA so far. Like, he's tried to save Clark from... Oh, God, I should have reread these before we did this. Yeah. Uh, he's tried to save Clark from... Or, Superman from something, but I can't even remember what it was now. And he, like, jumped into this, like, otherworldly dimension or, or okay. something. But, anyways. Was it, like, Kryptonian heroin or something? I like... don't know. It's probably something to do there. Oh, really? They're... Or oh. Brainiac or, I don't know, one of ba- or Superman's, like, worst nemesis. That was one of the villains. General Zod? No, it was oh, Zod. Oh, why not Zod? Zod yeah. Not Zod yet. Not yet. Needle no. before Zod. Yeah, okay. and awesome. don't even, like, get me started on the Superman <laughs> comics because they're is he still, so terrible. Is he still just a guy in jeans and a Superman t-shirt? Because <laughs> I saw that in the New 52 and um, I got really disgusted. Action comics. Yeah. I, I have a big... Thing about action comics, I love Superman. Okay. Superman's my favorite character. I put this on the record right now. Okay. Superman's my favorite character. I even named my cat after Superman. This yeah. is how much I love Superman. A little Russian blue named Clark. Yeah. yeah. But Grant Morrison is the worst writer ever. And I don't care how many people get mad about this. But it's just like <laughs> he's so lazy. His writing is just does not even make sense. Like I'm like pulling on my hair. You can't see me, but I am. Like this does not make any sense. Like, I'm reading it, and I'm like, this is my favorite character. This yeah. is his most memorable comic, and I'm even thinking about dropping it off my pick list. That's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. Yeah. Like, the latest one has been the the, the last, one of the last comics. I, I have to describe this because it's unreal. Okay. Um, basically, it's an alternate universe where Superman or Clark Kent is black. and I saw, I saw an issue of that. Yeah, yeah, and that's totally fine, but what they do is, like, they make the alternate universe exactly the same as the current universe. So he's like, both his Kryptonian parents are black, and they're like, we must send him on a spaceship and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I they mean... try to make they make him president. He's the president. That's his job. And I'm like, ugh. And then he's got, like, these robots that, like, pretend to be him while he's being Superman. And then wow. Clark and uh, Lois Lane come from the other dimension saying that they try to make a Superman, and they're not superpowered at all. Okay. Right? So they're like... They're, like, coming to this new alternate universe to find a Superman to help them be- battle this other Superman they created. And I'm like, this is so awful. Like, it's just so bad. Issue number nine or whatever it was, I'm like, you should be building more on Superman's character, mm. not going into alternate universes. There's yeah, this still early, so much to explore. This it's early still, in the run, yeah, Yeah, sure. like, I'm like, have you already run about ideas, yeah. Grant Morrison? Stop being lazy. Do you, do you think that maybe the reason Superman is, uh, like, black and the president and this i don't know i might be reading too much into it do you think it might be some sort of commentary about grant morrison thinking barack obama's like awesome 
Maybe. Maybe. You know, I have no problem with that, like, whole concept. Like, mm-hmm. you know, um, when they when they remade, uh, there's a few characters that they've remade yeah. into Black. Like, Green Lantern is the best example, I think. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And uh, it works so much better. Oh, I, I can't remember his name. John, John, John something John, or other. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm yeah. not really good with the name. Screen All I know is uh, Hal Jordan and Kyle Rayner. I don't know. Maybe I'm picking that part up. I don't know. Hell Jordan for sure. Hell Jordan, yeah. yeah. And then it went to that John. But the thing is, like, I have no problem with that. But I just think that if you're going to do that, you don't make it just a random one comic issue, alternate universe, crappy writing issue, you know? Yeah. yeah. You make it like a series or you make it like a mini series or something. Oh, right? so this whole thing, like, began one and comic. ended in one. Echo. Yeah. One well, that's comic. kind of what action comic kind of does it's standalone stories. It's terrible. Yeah. It's, it's so terrible. I don't even know, I don't even begin to know why people, like, you know, I can't say that I'd be a better writer at Superman because I probably would be, but I feel like Superman is, like, the most, like, unvalued character. It's because he's... he's so um, superpowered. I see Superman the same way as I see vampires and the whole, like, monster thing. Vampires have a million and one abilities. They have, like, two or three weaknesses. Superman yeah. can... Basically, he is deus ex machina, given Yeah, given no, form. Like, and for sure, like, I can totally agree with that. But I think there's so many things that make Superman a dynamic character. Yeah. And why he survived this long in general mm-hmm. is because people love him, right? You know, otherwise he wouldn't be around. And I think that he's just so... Like, I they just put crappy writers to the story. Yeah. It's so crappy. Like, you know, they're either over-focused on the action or over-focused on, like, the campy, like, alternate shit. Yeah. Like, you know, they should focus Superman as a character emotionally. He is, like, one of the best characters because yeah. Superman does not have two identities. He has three identities. He does? Yeah. Superman, Clark Superman, Kent. Superman, Clark Kent, Kal-El. Right? But when does he ever really bust out the Kal-El personality? But that's the thing. is It's like, nobody's really ever... Like, he only kind of do, he only does it when he goes when he visits his buddies in the bottle city of Kandor, pretty much. Right. He's like, "What's up, I'm Kal El." But that's away. the thing is, it's like there's three identities to play with. Yeah. And he's such a torn character. He's lost his whole family. Yeah. He's you know come to a new world. It, anybody can relate to that. See, this is when we were talking about Batman. Yeah. Able you to relate to Batman. His I don't parents see. were killed. You can. It, that's yeah. the same argument you just made for. Super no, I know, but yeah. I'm just saying. I'm saying that Batman is not more relatable than any other character because all the characters have elements that mm-hmm. are relatable. Yeah. And I think Superman is one of the best ones because... Wonder Man, too. Wonder Man. Wonder Woman, because... Wonder Woman, too, right. Made, made from clay. So many people made from clay. Actually, have you read the new Wonder Woman series? No, no. They they expanded on that and oh, not actually made from clay. Okay. <laughs> Big oh, well. Big there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, originally. Yeah. Originally, that's what... Yeah. But yeah, you were saying about Superman. Yeah, like Superman, um, he's just, there's so many things to him that make him such a good character. And you also got to look at the context of when Superman was made. He's made by Jewish people, right? Yeah. And they, like, they had experienced the internment. Well, they I don't know if they themselves experienced. No, no, they kind of. Uh, they, 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 they understand prosecutions. They understand, like, yeah, exactly. They understand, like, they made Superman. To fight the bullies, right? Yeah. It's such a, like, symbolic character that it's just, like, everybody just tends to go in there and just, you know, makes him so superficial. Like, he is the strong guy. You mm-hmm. know, even in the JLA, like, this is my one number thing. It's like, he, Superman never talks in the JLA. Yeah. I, the, I don't know how many bubbles I've actually seen where he actually says anything. Superman just kind of sits back? He just kind of sits back, and then he, when he has to they, throw the punches, he throws the punches. So they kind of just basically treat Superman as a, as a big gun. Yeah, but they never expand on him as a character. I mean, I guess that's another failing of the JLA as a comic book. How do you treat all of these characters? Especially with something like the New 52. Like, yeah. with, with the original uh, DC run, starting from the, the, well, the 60s or whatever, but uh, they had these characters established well before they like, hey, let's make them into a team. Yeah. And this, they're just restarting everything. These are sort exactly. sort of the same characters, but different. Well, they're, uh, I wouldn't say that, like, you know, people have been harping on the, the New 52 as, like, you know, crime because, like, you know, you're restarting all these characters, changing them. Mm-hmm. There's not a whole lot that they've changed. As far as I know, they're all pretty much going back into their, you know, streamlined identities. Yeah. Um, 
they're trying new things. The new things are failing. They're going back to the old things. That's how I see it. <laughs> so the new 52 <clears throat> is a failed experiment. That's what I think it, yeah. I think so, but I think the goal of the new 52 wasn't necessarily to make something new out of it, other than like that was just a you know, positive. Like, yeah. They could do that, but I think it was to just bring new readers because they realized baby boomers are kind of on their way out and yeah. they need new people. I, you can't expect somebody to look at a comic, see issue... 654 and be like oh yeah i could just start this right now you know some people are very intimidated by the fact that you know there's that many comics so when you start them all at once yeah you know it's a good jumping on point for a lot of people that's the only way i see it what though i've i don't really see that as being in my opinion super argument for why they did the 52 i understand it and it's 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 an an argument but uh there's always different story arcs starting and ending, and I no, think I totally if, agree, if yeah. there's a story arc that sounds interesting and you've never read a comic like this type of comic before, just pick that up, start from there. No, I totally agree. If you agree. hear about other stories, go back. Like, I don't read a lot of Batman, but uh, every now and then I'll hear about a story that I'll want to, that since they have the trades now, you can yeah, just go and get good. them pretty much anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. But I don't, like, that's the thing, is, like, that is so true. Like, when people ask me, where do I start in a comic? Mm-hmm. I'm like, you start at Wikipedia. And I'm not yeah. even, like, being, like, like, like you know, dumb about it. It's true. Like, you just read up the history of the character. Then go find an arc that you want to read, like you said, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, find an arc that interests you. You know, they're all in trades now. It's not yeah. hard. They're all, like, six-parters, four-parters, or whatever. But I don't think a lot of people realize that that's how comics work. Like, yeah, you know, if it it's... was an ongoing story from one point to the other, mm-hmm. that's what I think a lot of people see with the numbers. I think in general, they should just get rid of the number system. Really? But I think that that would be very confusing. It would be super confusing. Like, I think they should just make them all minis now. Like, I know, really like, think that's a terrible idea. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, because, like, I think that would get them a lot of money in terms of, like, you know, picking up new readers. Because when you do minis, like, one to four, one to four. Yeah. Or one to six, one to six. Like, you have the numbers, but you have one to six, one to six, right? Yeah. You have the title. Like, a lot of minis do that. Yeah. Um, a lot of comics do that, too, that aren't DC or Marvel. Like um, Wildstorm and Image and Dark Yeah, Wars they and, all, like, yeah. a lot of them do that with some of their comics. One thing, one another good way, I think, for a person to start out a kind of a comic series, like, in, in terms of uh, the JLA, maybe picking up, one of the miniseries, uh, an Elseworlds type thing, maybe yeah. maybe not El- not Elseworlds, but like a JLA The Nail, you yeah. know, which like for want of a nail, blah 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 blah, that whole thing. Which exactly. Like, what just... if the JLA was created without Superman because something uh, a nail popped a tire, which stopped the cancer from finding him? That blah, actually blah, happened. Blah. Yeah, it, it was in this story. He was raised by some Amish people, and so the JLA <laughs> did uh, end up. Uh, fighting some horrible monster thing, and their fight took them into uh, the Amish community. And uh, of course. Clark Kent, with his Amish beard, I oh hope, I, I haven't read this, joins in the fight as super amazing. Amish. And, uh, yeah, and it to me, that's a great <laughs> thing, because you still get, if not Superman, there's a, you'll get a, an idea of the characters. You'll kind of understand, okay, so this is how a team comic exactly. works. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. totally. And that's the thing. Is you just have to go out there and pick up an arc has nothing to do with the numbers at all. Yeah. Um, the one thing, though, with the JLA is, in terms of a team, it just doesn't... It works, but at the same time, it almost feels really superficial. Okay. Because you can't expand on characters <clears throat> within the comic, right? Very rarely. If you do, it's one character at a time. Yeah. Because yeah. the comics are so small. You know? That's the only problem. But the thing is, like, a lot of people... I think that's a, a lot of people who went to the Avengers and saw the Avengers movie, for example. Yeah. Uh, they're like, I didn't understand. Like, you know, I didn't like the movie. But you got to, like, ask those who people. A lot, of, yeah. a lot of those people didn't actually see the first four movies. Like the Iron Man, the yeah, Thor, the Captain America. Yeah, they didn't see the I movies see... that built up the characters. See, this is, the, this is why the Avengers worked so well. Yeah. Just because they made those previous movies. If they hadn't. The Avengers would have been either a four-hour-long movie, yeah, or it wouldn't have gone as well as it did. I will say though that the that the Avengers movie was fairly good, just in the sense that it gave enough of a backstory to each of the characters. Like if you'd missed, like let's say you didn't see Thor, you could watch that, and they still kind of like okay, stuff happened. Up. It's very very brief. It's but... very very brief because the thing is they also got rid of the Rainbow Ridge, right? And they never even yeah, expanded yeah. on. 
that's a that's my one concern with the Avengers movie yeah. is how the hell did Thor get down to Earth with the Rainbow Bridge? And I was, they're like, did they said they they very uh, briefly out, covered it. They pop did, out answer. They yeah, they just they like we used lots energy. of power. Yeah, and, like, we summoned it off energy. I was like, oh okay. Yeah. You know, but that's the thing is it's like you know, without having watched the previous movies, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that they did give enough backstory, especially with Hulk, because I think a lot of people probably should see that movie. But either of them, the first one, terrible. Which uh, one, Eric Bana? Eric Bana. I don't know. Uh, see that oh, one. it's bad. The other one was. It was and Norton was it, okay. It was okay, but I think that there was like well, there was like a good like forty minute abomination. Yeah, the abomination part. It, it's like a decent movie ending was with an a retarded thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The abomination was fight so was bad. an abomination. Yeah, but the uh, uh, Mark Ruffalo. Was a great. Oh, album. he's so good. Yeah, yeah. He's it, such a good replacement. Anyways, we're, yeah, we're gonna, let's still getting off get topic back here. to the JLA. I might. There are a number of different JLA teams, other than obviously, you know, the JLA. <laughs> there was a uh, uh, Justice League Europe, which was actually, I think, the first Justice League comic I ever bought. Ew. It was a, it was like a double sized one, and they fought some sort of uh, Injustice League thing from another dimension That's who cool. kicked all of their asses severely. Really? It was really epic. Um, there's uh, Justice League International, which I think came from Justice League Europe. Ooh, Something like maybe, that. Maybe, yeah. Not, that I'm not be. sure. Extreme Justice was the team that the JLA would send. Wasn't it? Weren't they the team that they would send for things that the Justice League themselves didn't want to do? It's like... The, like the Black Ops? Yeah, it's, yeah. Like the, it's like the X-Force of the... Yeah, yeah. I, of the, I, I love X-Force. Yeah, I know. Me too. It's really good. So good. Um, the uh, JL Ancients. Which uh, did you ever hear about them? No. It was some weird time <laughs> so traveling ridiculous. thing. Uh, don't don't you laugh. <laughs> it was a <laughs> very like serious. Abraham Lincoln's in it. Oh, I wish. No, it <laughs> it introduced a character named Manitou Raven, and it was a bunch of super powered people from like ancient times, cavemen and uh, Atlanteans and stuff. And yeah, they had to <laughs> they had to fight the actual JLA for some confusing reason. I don't uh, know. Yeah, some, that's usually what happens. Yeah, I find with comics when you're trying to explain what happens to someone. <laughs> Even if they read comics too, I always feel kind of like this is a I'm this is dumb. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree. It's yeah. just like sometimes it's just so ridiculous. Like when you were explaining the, uh, the Super Red Nail comic or whatever. Hey, it's it's, it's sounds a, ridiculous. But just it's a, sounds it, good but ridiculous. It's it's a, it's kind of like the whole butterfly effect, you know. It's if Superman. As long as it's not Grant Morrison, I don't care. I don't All know right. who it was. <laughs> uh, uh, th- there's another team which. I also uh, picked up, which was a uh, JL Justice League Antarctica, which was a one shot, which was made up of the. I think they were they were the Injustice League. It was just a bunch of loser supervillains like Clock King and uh, Major Disaster and Big Sur and Those other characters. You have like, no I've idea. Never who heard they of are. any of them. They they're they're big. Fu- they had. Uh, do you know Gnort? Gnort who? Gnort. Oh. The Green Lantern Dog Man. Yeah. That yeah, fit. Yeah, he was yeah. part of it because oh. it was basically we don't want to deal with these people. Let's send them to Antarctica where they can't hurt anyone. <laughs> they had to deal with uh, <coughs> what snow monsters? No, uh, killer penguins. Oh, not wow, even so not better. even snow monsters, but yeah. Uh, there's <laughs> the Justice League Task Force, which I know nothing about, and uh, the Justice League Elite, which might actually be what we thought the Extreme Justice was. I don't remember. Yeah, I I don't yeah. know these. These offshoot teams, it's like... Most of them fail. Most of the comics well, will last a few years and then people <laughs> hate them. Out of all those, the only one that I know that still exists is JLA International. Yeah, I think so. That's kind of, that's that's new, though. Like, it has uh, the, yeah, the Chinese have, guy, the August General in Iron. There's a JLA Dark team, too. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, with uh, Zatanna and, uh, yeah, and Constantine want, and all that. Yeah, and yeah. that's amazing. They brought Hellblazer from I I that is something I really do like about the new 52. Yeah. Is them they, bringing in Vertigo like, characters. Vertigo. Yeah, like uh the the Grifter. Yeah. And all those I, Swamp Thing. Yeah, Swamp Thing. He he was sort of in DC before. Was he? Yeah. I thought he was a Vertigo. There was one there was one arc where he kind of took over Gotham and made plants cover everything and it was him and Batman. And mm-hmm. I know you love Batman. Yeah, I love Batman. <laughs> yeah. But uh that's the thing about these teams is they don't last, so they're not worth, I don't know, they're not worth keeping track of because they're obviously, like, failed experiments. Yeah, you know? yeah. All right, uh, who do you think is, who in your opinion is the worst Justice Leaguer? doesn't need to be part of the main founding team, though in my opinion Aquaman 
is the uh, worst. Excuse me, no. Yeah, I know you love Aquaman. Okay, we're going to go into a little rant about Aquaman now because... Fine. Because you just brought it up and you had to bring out the beast. I, I will say, I, I recently got uh, Kate Beaton's Heart of Vagrant. And he, she does uh, these comics with this yeah, very short thing too. with uh, Aquaman, where he's just a crazy dude with a beard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was well, awesome. Well, the thing is, there was a time when Aquaman was actually that. with like the. Oh, yeah, the yeah. I, I remember that. That was, um, that was cool. The one thing I have to say about Aquaman is he's an underrated character. Okay. But the interesting thing is that... Aside from the JLA, his comic, like his Aquaman comic, yeah, like yeah. DC, is probably one of the better ones I'm picking up in terms of storyline. Really? Yeah, because it's actually like constant, like, you know, it's not like, you know, dips and whatever. Like, you know, we're not having random, just alternate universe shit coming not in. Not that we're action not... comics bullshit. Yeah, yeah. We're, like, you know, it's very, very streamlined. Like, the story is well written. And yeah. it's, it's like action packed, full, like, you know. You don't feel like you're dragging your feet reading it, right? Yeah. So, I have to say that they're doing a really good job at making Aquaman a, a decent character. I think the people's misperception of Aquaman as a character is that because he is... Guardian the of the seas, seas. Guardian of the Seas. Arthur people, Curry. People think that he is, like... That's oh, all he can do. That's all he can do. Yeah, he's yeah. super. He's got super strength too. He's Wonder Woman's got super strength. He's got super strength. Does with with Aquaman? Is it sort of like Submariner that if he stays away from water, he starts losing his mind and powers? Yeah, okay. pretty much. Like like I said before, with Marvel and DC having pretty much the same characters, like you know one or the other. Yeah. Yeah, he is pretty much the same thing as Namor. Okay. Or Namor or whatever. Submariner. Yes. Yeah, the name that everyone knows how yeah. to pronounce. Imperius Rex. Oh, <laughs> you know, Jesus. That guy. So, I mean... What an awful, awful battle crap. Yeah, I don't even know where that came from. Um, but the thing is, like, um, with Aquaman, it's... Uh, they're doing such a good job with him. And, like, the thing is, people just think, oh, yeah, he talks to fish. In the first <laughs> comic. In the first comic. Yes, he's, in a, he's eating fish at a restaurant. I heard about that. Yeah. And people are staring at him. And he's just like, what? And they're like, you're eating fish, but you're Aquaman. He's yeah. just like, so? He's like, they're like, but you talk to fish. He's like... I don't talk to them. I command them, right? So they're trying oh, okay. to build him as a character who's not fruity and lame and whatever. Yeah. Although he's got such a history of being that way. I think it's because... It's funny because you know how we talk about Batman? Yeah. Developing from a very campy, like, weird character yeah. to very dark? Yeah. I think Aquaman just hasn't reached that point, you know? People are still relating him to back in the 60s where when he's he had, riding on dolphins. Right, like, yeah. Wee, 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 Wearing like, his you know, weird-ass Speedo and having the stupid hair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think it's funny that some characters develop yeah. and some characters just stay back to their old, like, you know, the, well, how they were back in the 60s when really, mm -hmm. look at any comic book character, they were all funny, like jokes. Like, they were not meant to be taken dark yeah, or it, seriously. I, I, that, that always thinks, whenever I think of how characters have developed, I always just go back to the Batman when he was constantly smiling. Yeah. Just beating the hell out of people exactly. with this crazy fucking grin on his face. Yeah. And Making really jokes like and a stuff. Like a grin. Yeah, he's just like, ha ha! So yeah, does anybody even, like, I think maybe some people would, but they, it's almost like they can accept both parts, but Aquaman isn't there. People are still like, oh, he's just that throwback from yeah. the 60s. You know? Like, so I think they're trying really hard, and they're doing a good job at making Does Aquaman he have a beard? Too. He does not have a beard. <sighs> then what's the point? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he might develop a beard later. Yes, I, o the over thing, time, as his character develops, Another thing so I like about Aquaman's hair. character is that Mira is in it. That's his wife? His wife, yeah. Okay. And, she, and they're very much, like, you know, very much both main characters of the comic, which all is right. nice. Um, One thing regarding him eating fish at a restaurant and people yeah. being all like, what the hell? <laughs> okay, um, look at, <coughs> just look at any Atlantean, let, let's, in, in the DC universe and look at Aquaman, like, he's buff. He's not, yeah. he's not some scrawny dude. No. He eats protein. Yeah. What, a, maybe, I don't know, some sort of seaweed down there. There might be, like, some tofu underwater thing but i don't think that everyone down there is just like oh we can't eat fish yeah no seriously just a, like, an entire culture that does not eat meat well i think it's because people think that aquaman i don't understand this but i think some people think aquaman is a fish yeah. and aquaman is not a fish yeah also you know? with with the thing too is with uh, him commanding versus him talking to yeah. the fish 
talking makes it sound like he needs to reason with yeah them. exactly it's like hey come on minos i just need you guys to come over here for a second they're like fuck you aquaman no we, he commands we got them. school to go to exactly. oh, oh awful fish joke yes <laughs> terrible but yeah exactly so like i think that's why they're trying to really build him up as a character that yeah yeah you know should be taken more seriously in the jla too in the comic he is very sto- stoic. Yeah, like, I, I kind of, very... I kind of picture him, despite the fact that he's constantly mocked and made fun of. If he was in the JLA, I would see him sort of around the same area of Batman, just in the sense, like very grim. He's, yeah, he's, he's there very... to do fucking business. He yeah. left the goddamn seas to help America for some reason. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, and that's the thing is like it's a, it's funny because in the comic, they make. Like, they make fun of the fact that people don't take them seriously, right? <laughs> people are like, oh, Aquaman's here to save us. Where's the Superman or something, right? Yeah, yeah. But then he's, like, pounding in cars and stuff because yeah, yeah. He, he's super strong, right? And he can command the water. He can command the fish. Yeah. Like, come on. How is this, like, a bad character? So I think he's very much, like, you know, nobody seems to appreciate what I do, yeah. yet I still do it, you know? Oh, have you heard of uh, the comic Irredeemable? Yeah, uh, that Maybe is Boo. Boo? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, I've heard of it. Basically, it's a Superman-type hero known as the Plutonian who, you know, he, he saves people and some people he can hear, not hear thoughts, but, like, they'll be whispering and stuff. It's just like, you know, if he was here sooner, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. Or it's like, why isn't the Plutonian here this time? Stuff like that. And eventually, like, it starts to it starts to build on him because he's... he's Makes him crazy. St- yeah, and he loses his mind. And uh, becomes the world's worst villain because he's essentially Superman. No one knows how to kill him. And he's going around murdering people because he feels like it. Because, like, I gave everything to you people and you're so ungrateful. You don't say thanks. Everything I do. And I can kind of see that maybe happening with someone like Aquaman. Especially if people are constantly just like, oh, well, who gives a shit? It's Aquaman. Yeah. And then he does the good stuff anyway. Exactly. And it's, it, it like, builds his character in a new, in a new way. And yeah. it's so good that way. Like, maybe it was good that he was taken, like, you know, not so seriously because, you know, people are changing perceptions. Like, that's what yeah. he does, right? Yeah. In the comic. In terms of worst character, let's get back to this. Yeah, yeah. Of the JLA. That um, was a hell of a tangent. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, once you brought God oh, there, yeah, I had yeah. to set things straight here. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I only really know the main characters, and all of them are pretty decent. Like, you know, um, the ones that we have. So, like, Aquaman, uh, Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, Flash, Green Arrow, Black Canary. Yeah. yeah. Um, Zatanna. I like Zatanna yeah, a lot. Yeah, and... Um, and I... Only, mainly because she's a pretty lady. Yeah. I like that. But I think... I think she She's adds, very powerful, too. She adds, right? Because yeah. the thing is, like, a lot of... The heroes don't actually understand that dick very much, mm-hmm. right? And Superman is actually that's that's one know, of his weaknesses. One yeah. of his weaknesses. People don't know that, but it is like yeah, yeah. you know he. Mister Mixicalopix or whatever he yeah. is. He's Mister Mixicalopix, the imp from the fourth dimension that comes around every now and then just to mess with Superman. Oh, uh, I don't know. Seriously, say it again. Mister Mixicalopix. It's like a. It's like eight consonants in a row. Oh with yeah. With a Y in there. Oh baby. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. I think I would remember. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Maybe I haven't read any of those art. Maybe there was one where the Joker got his powers, and made. I can't remember what the arc was called, but uh, it it was awesome. It was really really good. It that introduced the new Bizarro. Oh. My God, and it introduced. Don't you dare badmouth Bizarro. I'm not gonna badmouth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Anyway, so worst. Let's get back to topic. Worst JLA or. Oh god, I don't know because I only know the main ones. Just I go don't... go off those. Go off those. If that's what you know, and of course, Black I would, Canarian. You know, I would yeah. say Cyborg, just because yeah. like the reason that I want to pick one of the main ones is just because it's like, why would you, you know, pick one person who's been there for like two weeks? Or, yeah, yeah, you know, one issue or two issues, and then realize that oh, that was a big mistake. We should have, you know, you want to pick a real one, but yeah. I don't even think I wouldn't even consider Cyborg a real one. No, he's just because they he's just, basically like, tech support in this by, by the. And I think maybe that's what makes him so bad. Like I think, and I also think of him as a Teen Titan. Like mm-hmm. he is a teenager, right? And yeah. They do have a Teen Titan series. Why did he not? God why is he not in the series? Te- yeah. but, like you know, like why is he not there? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, like. There's... I don't, I don't know what they were thinking. I think that they were thinking of adding more races into JLA. Make it a bit more. Make it a yeah. bit more multicultural. But 
uh, you know, de- Martian Manhunter is a totally different race. Like, why, yeah. you know, like. But the, that, there's not a lot of Martian children reading JLA right now. No, it's, I, under, I kind of Yeah, that is very but... true. Um, I think there's there's cyborg is not the only be, black superhero though. No, I they don't. could have used any other. Which I think I can only really think of Steel right now. <laughs> yeah, Steel. Yeah. Um, the thing is, I think that instead of just trying to recycle heroes, they should really look at maybe introducing a nah, maybe brand new hero would work. I don't know. Maybe. I don't really know because. The thing is, all these characters were created in, like, the 40s, the yeah. 30s, 40s, and of course they were all white, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, maybe there were some black ones, but not very many. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, you want that, you know, really strong, like, mo- role model. Yeah. I think they could have easily made um, Hal Jordan, yeah. Instead of Hal Jordan, use, use uh, John. John. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that would have just been so much better. Yeah. You know? And kept Martian Manager, like... I think he is one of the most inspirational black characters in all of the, all the, of comics. The Green Lantern one. Yeah, the yeah. Green Lantern one. Because like, he was a, he was a good Green Lantern. He, he was, was a very like, good. He had Green a Lantern. lot more face time than the other one did. Yeah, yeah. and Lantern. in in the uh, Justice League cartoon they used him. Yeah, and exactly. he was very good. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know why they didn't. Uh, they were trying to go back to the roots, but when you introduce different characters anyways it doesn't really make any sense they could have just used Hal jordan as the specter <coughs> 52 because the specter is still pretty intense yeah and he, exactly as Hal jordan he was the best specter yeah too. so i don't know i i don't really know about cyborg's character other than that like out of the main main ones i would say i i don't really like the flash i have to be honest here i love the flash and the thing is i can't explain why I yeah, really that, don't that, know why. And I feel like that's a lot of reasons. A lot of people's reasons. Like, like, oh, I like the Flash. Flash. Why? He Shut up. He just runs really fast, you know? Yeah, yeah. But he's so, like, you know... I One reason I think I like the Flash is because I like his villains. I like... Uh, his villains? Yeah, yeah. Awful. No, no, no. They're, they're like, <laughs> the reverse Flash? Is that <coughs> okay, what it... Yeah, or, or Zoom? Zoom, yeah, because he's... The yellow one? Yeah, the, yeah. He he's trying to make him a better hero by making him experience tragedy, oh, which I to see. me, that is beautiful. That's, that's such a weird... It is it is weird, which is good. He's, the guy's <laughs> nuts. Um, it's like Flash's Bizarro, really. Sort of, yeah, yeah. I think my worst member, and this is kind of from me doing research on the internet, because I've, I've always been more of a Marvel than a DC guy. I've only in the last few years started reading DC. The JLA was once uh, headquartered in Detroit, and one of the main characters that is universally hated was a guy named Vibe. <laughs> Used to be a gang member. He would put on a fake Spanish accent around white people in the comic. Wow. I know, and his Who power... Who this guy was a good idea? I don't know, but like the, he was so hated that that whole period that he existed is known as the Vibe era. Because people... It <laughs> was just... It. Like there was, uh, it was it was um, early '80s, I think, because yeah, he's he had like MC Hammer pants oh, and the Soul God. Patch and shades. And he's the first JLAer to die on duty, and that to me says a that's a big message. Like people hated him, so it's like anybody like, they've been going on for. Let's say it was <laughs> the '80s; they'd have been a team for like 20 or so years. They probably already had. Maybe not the 150 members at that point, but a, a, a lot of characters. And then one guy who's introduced, and supposed to be, like... He was one of those characters that they tried so hard, like, the kids are gonna love this. He's got facial hair, he's got I don't shades. know why anybody would think the kids would love that. That's the reason they had Snapper Carr. They, for some reason, thought, like, kids can't relate to the Justice League. Let's That's have a teenager That's why you have sidekicks like Robin and Wonder Girl. Who are still just, like... Sidekicks like yeah. Robin and Wonder Girl. They've all upgraded to Teen Titans, though, but whatever. Yeah. Kid Flash. Again. Kid Flash. Kid Flash is dumb, though. He's awful. He's funny, at least. That's the only thing. But yeah, no. I don't know why anybody would create a character like the one you just said. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just pandering. <coughs> is it is. Um, well, we've been going on for a bit, I think, to wrap this up. I don't know. Do you have anything to, anything to plug or anything that you'd like to promote? The one thing is I think people should give the JLA a chance in terms of comics. It's a hard comic to write. It's oh, a yeah. big it's a big comic to write. And I think that There's a huge amount of pressure, yeah. There's it is a huge amount of pressure. And it's like, you know, you're dealing with six, seven characters, you're not dealing with one. Mm-hmm. Like I think with the one 
off comics. So like Superman, Batman, like there's no excuse why these comics should be good. Yeah. Because you have one character to focus on. You know, that's it. Yeah. So like, you know, but with the JLA, it's so hard. And I think in terms of movies, I would love to see JLA in a movie, but I don't know how it would work. It would I can't be, even begin to think of how it would work. It would work. be so hard to do well. It would be so hard to do well. Yeah. You would need a phenomenal director doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's the last thing I'll have to say. Well, uh, thank you very much, Marina, and I uh, hope welcome. you have fun in your travels to Edmonton. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, this has been Geek Genary.